Liar Paradox Your friend tells you that he's always lying. At first, you didn't think much of it. But then you realize that if he's always lying, the statement he told you was also a lie. If he's lying about always lying, that means he was telling the truth that he was a liar. But if he was telling the truth, it now contradicts his original statement that he's always a liar. It's like a snake eating its tail, or a cat chasing its reflection. That's basically what the liar paradox is all about. This paradox lets you step into a mere funhouse of logic, where your argument always gets reflected to you. It's as if your mind is playing a non-stop game of ping pong where the ball always bounces back at you no matter how hard you hit it. The liar paradox creates a logical loop. Suppose the statement, this statement is false, is true. Then that must mean it is false. But if it's false, then it's true. This is where the loop happens, as it never stops being a question of whether it's true or false. You're now basically in an endless debate with yourself. Ship of Theseus Let's say you have a ship sailing the rugged seas for a while already. It's been through some tough times, dodging cannonballs, wrestling with a few krakens, and surviving a few storms. It eventually becomes more like a ship wreck than a seaworthy vessel, so you start swapping every old part with a new one to make it as good as new again. Over time, the ship gets damaged again and needs more replacements. That's when all of its original parts have been replaced with new ones. Now the question is whether or not this ship is still the same old one. But here's the bigger question. If you took all the old parts from the ship and rebuilt a new ship, which of the two is your ship? You see, the paradox of the ship of Theseus tackles fundamental questions about identity and change. It looks at whether something retains its identity after undergoing a series of changes that have altered its appearance. For example, if you got all sorts of different plastic surgeries, such as a Brazilian butt lift or some implants in your melons, does that mean that you're no longer the same person you were before because you're now a thicker version of your old self? The argument is that it all boils down to the object's function. So if the ship continues functioning like the old ship, it's still the same. But others believe it's more of a question of identity, meaning as long as this new object still identifies itself as the old object, its identity never changes. So whether you're the ship of Theseus or the ship of Theseus, it's all about how you identify yourself. Grandfather Paradox The Grandfather Paradox is a big oops in the philosophical and hypothetical topic of time travel because it creates a possible moment when you cease to exist. So let's say you invented a time machine and traveled back to meet your grandparents when they were single. But you thought that your grandfather was a big jerk when he was 25 and decided that grandma was too good for him. You prevent them from meeting. If that's the case, your dad shouldn't exist. And if he never existed, you also don't exist. But the real paradox happens when you think about this. If you don't exist, you wouldn't have been able to stop your grandparents from meeting. So no one would have been able to mess up their love story in the first place. You should still exist if no one stopped them from doing the deed in bed. And if you exist, you would have gone back in time to stop them from meeting. It creates a logical loop where every argument and question makes sense. However, this is where the more boring physics topic comes in, explaining that every decision creates a different timeline of events. So if you prevented your grandparents from meeting, that doesn't change the future events of your timeline, but only creates another timeline. But unless you find a way to invent a time-traveling car, there's no way for you to tell if you can trim your family tree back into a shrub. Sorites Paradox You're on the beach one day and a wave of boredom hits you. You decided to gather some sand and started counting every grain. You found that there were precisely 10,000 grains in that heap. Then you got bored again and took one grain away. It's still a heap because having 9,999 grains doesn't change it much. But when you start taking more grains, the term heap now becomes vague because you don't know when the heap stops becoming a heap. That's the Sorites paradox in a sandbox. This paradox explores how small and seemingly insignificant changes can eventually lead to something bigger. Let's say that you're organizing your socks. You start with a bunch of blue socks and begin swapping every blue sock out with a green sock. One green sock doesn't change the entire bunch, but when you keep swapping, you look at a pile of primarily green socks. But the question is, when did it switch from being mostly blue to primarily green? Applied in your growth, the Sorites paradox makes you wonder when you become an adult. You just don't grow from being a 
10-pound baby into a 200-pound adult as soon as you hit 20 years old. Instead, you undergo minor changes that incrementally turn you into an adult. But the paradox wonders when a baby turns into a grown-up. Did you turn into an adult when you got circumcised? Or did it happen when you drank your first beer? No one can answer that question. Barber Paradox Let's say that there's this famous barber in town. Call him Bob the Barber. He's got a reputation as sharper than his scissors, and everyone wants him to be the only one cutting their hair. But he has one rule. Only shave those who don't shave themselves. If you shave yourself, Bob won't ever offer his services to you. One morning, Bob realizes that his hair and beard have become too long, that he could give Bigfoot a run for his money. That's when he wondered if he should shave himself. But if he did, he would violate his rule of shaving only those who don't shave themselves. On the flip side, if Bob doesn't shave himself, he falls under the category of people who need to be shaved by Bob. So it becomes a classic case of to shave or not to shave. He's now in a hairy predicament. The barber paradox creates a situation where following the rules forces you to break the rules. But if you don't follow the rule, you also break the rule. This problem leads to a contradictory loop that becomes hard to solve using traditional logic rules. Bootstrap Paradox One day, you created a time machine. You decided to go back to 1980 to meet Michael Jordan when he was in college. As a token of your appreciation for his legendary status, you gave him a pair of one of his Jordan sneakers. The problem is that the first Jordan shoe was released in 1985, well after you gave MJ your gift. But Jordan got inspired by the shoes you gave him, so he decided to team up with Nike and release more similar shoes. So as you return to the future, the same Jordan sneakers you brought back in time are still there in your home. What you've just pulled off is the bootstrap paradox. You thought the Jordan sneakers existed because Michael Jordan released them in the 1980s, but on Jordan's end, the sneakers came from you. Now it creates a paradox where no one knows where the sneakers originally came from, keeping you trapped in a loop tighter than any shoelace. In simple terms, this paradox exists when an object has no clear origin. Draw a circle on a piece of paper and ask people where the starting point and the circle ends. No one could tell you the answer because the circle itself has no clear starting point or origin as far as others are concerned. It's the same scenario in the bootstrap paradox, where you'll be left wondering which between the egg and the chicken came first. But Noktarsky paradox. Take a solid ball and split it into finite pieces. Now this is where it gets wild. According to the Banach-Tarski paradox, you can take all these different pieces and reassemble them into not one, but two balls. You're not looking at two balls smaller than the original, but two balls identical to the last. It's as if the original ball came back from the cloning lab and came back with a twin brother. But there's no special magical trick here. This paradox relies on some very deep ideas from set theory and geometry. It involves points in space, and the concept that they can be rearranged. By relying on that concept, you can create an infinite number of different objects from one object. So if this worked in real life on an entire pizza, then you'd be having two pizzas for the price of one. But the sad part is that you can't do this trick for an infinite food hack that would turn you into a viral Instagram sensation. This is only theoretical, because creating something out of nothing is physically impossible. Still, the paradox challenges what we know about about space and volume. It's like you went on a trip to Ikea and discovered that you can rearrange your room and fit two beds in the same space that could only fit one bed before. Paradox of the Unexpected Hanging Let's say that you're a criminal about to get hanged for your misdeeds. Your executioner is a bit mischievous and tells you that you'll be hanged on a surprise day of the week, but you won't know when until the last minute. But you tell the executioner that you can't be hanged on a weekday because if you haven't been hanged by Thursday night, Friday would be too predictable making the surprise execution not so surprising anymore. You thought you had found a way around the system, and then you started using the same reason each day of the week, eliminating them all, until you concluded you wouldn't be hanged since it would contradict the surprise condition. You're now safe from the gallows or so you thought. The executioner tells you that you're going to get hanged on Wednesday. You're shocked because, according to your logic, Wednesday and every other day should have been ruled out. It looks like your logic took a noose dive because the executioner found a loophole in your calendar of excuses. The paradox in this situation talks about the contradictions between logical deduction and surprise. 
You thought that you had it figured out and outsmarted fate, but a surprise doesn't play by the rules in a tug of war against logic. After all, if you could predict a surprise, you wouldn't call it a surprise anymore. There is a conflict between the two ideas here because your logic is trying to make sense of something that shouldn't make sense. Intrigued by paradoxes and the interplay between logic and surprise? Join our Discord community, where we unravel such mind-bending mysteries together. Omnipotence Paradox You've got this cosmic hotshot claiming he can do anything, like a true god. He creates the galaxy and everything in it. But if this being is so great that he can create anything, you'd be wondering if he can create something so extreme that not even he, with all his omnipotent powers, can handle it. A rock that's so heavy that no one can lift it. If this being could create a rock that not even his divine muscles could lift, that would mean he's not all-powerful. After all, a perfectly powerful being should be able to lift anything. But if he can't create a rock that's impossible to lift, that would mean he can't create anything, defeating the meaning of omnipotent. It's now a rocky situation for this being, and he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. The paradox goes back to the question of whether or not God exists as a truly omnipotent being. After all, if he's the top dog in the universe, he should be able to create something that not even he can destroy. But that defeats the purpose of having limitless power. Twin Paradox Let's look at two twins. One is Anna, a homebody who just loves staying at home to binge all the Netflix shows. Meanwhile, Eve is an adventurous astronaut trained to travel the cosmos. One day, Eve hops into her spaceship and flies at near light speed to boldly go where no man has before. Meanwhile, Anna stays home, munching on popcorn while flipping between movies. However, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, the faster a person travels through space, the slower time ticks for her. Traveling through space at near light speed gives Eve a slow motion button for life. That means her aging will be several times slower slower than her twin sister, who's back on Earth and aging normally. So by the time Eve returns to Earth as a hero, it's as if she hasn't aged a day. On the other hand, Anna has aged faster than moldy cheese inside a refrigerator. She now has gray hair and is wrinkled after beating the world record for most TV shows binge-watched in a lifetime. This paradox means that even though Anna and Eve were born simultaneously, a paradox can arise because our ordinary understanding is that time ticks away uniformly for everyone. Relativity, however, changes this concept, especially when dealing with extreme speeds and gravitational forces. This effect has been tested and confirmed through experiments with atomic clocks and high-speed particles, proving that time can slow down for particles moving at incredible speeds. Paradox of Tolerance Let's say that you live in a super chill society where everyone's all about accepting different views and ideas. People say, yeah, I respect that you like pineapples on pizza. Now everyone would want to live in a place like that, but the problem here is that everyone is so open-minded that you might end up accepting ideas that aren't quite open-minded. It's like you're all hosting a potluck dinner where all dishes are welcome, but one of the guests brought in sardines dipped in marshmallow cream. Usually, in a perfectly tolerant society, you'd allow that guy to bring his unappealing food and eat it, but the dish is so disgusting that it shouldn't even exist. The paradox of tolerance warns that if a society is overly tolerant by allowing all ideas without limit, it risks being overtaken by people who exploit that tolerance. Simply put, if you're too chill about everything, you might find yourself in a chilling situation where people abuse your tolerance for everything. The paradox of tolerance also teaches that there should be a sweet spot between tolerance and intolerance. And finding the spot where we draw the line is one of society's challenges.